Welcome to the new episode of Fuller House. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? Uh, I'm the man without a plan, Daniel, host with the most, Barnyard, uh, Steve, we got, we got Gizmo here, uh, Crimson Fury. That's stupid. What do you want to be named in Crimson or that My bullshit? name. Okay, you're Brittany. You can just oh, have another one of your names. Uh, we got Better Liam. We got the, the Persian killer? version. No. Did you say the Persian the version? The Persian version. Oh. Persian. 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 Do you want to, like, have not had sex or do you just want to be the version of the Persia? Persia? I want to be the best version The Persian of Persia. version Okay, of the Persian version. You got a name? Hey, name me. Um, Jared, name me. Strawberry shortcake. <laughs> Pink powder Man, y'all are lame. I wanted to call you boring I Brittany. How lame is that? <laughs> and, I uh, the booze. These two gentlemen over here, Marquez oh. and Zach from Two Awesome Men. If you could hear his voice, it's probably good enough. Yeah. yeah. I swear to God, Zach is taller in real life. I'm looking at your videos, I was, and I meet him today, and I'm gonna say, oh, hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, shit. We just got out of Ready Player One. Woo! We don't know what anybody else thinks about this movie. Yeah, this is the weird part where we have to, like, confess what we said or what we think. <laughs> I guess we'll start down the line. Brittany. I adored this movie. Ooh. I liked it a lot. I won't say I loved it, but I feel like I liked it a lot. I thought it was very mediocre. Mm. <laughs> it's okay. I'm with, I'm with him. It's, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a pretty good movie. He didn't ask his one. <laughs> he didn't see it. I agree I'm, with I'm him. It was really good. He's just here for the views. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, first your version. What's up? Um, I thought that it had a lot of good aspects, but there were some things that I had questions about. So. This movie made me want to punch every nerd I see in the face. Mm. <laughs> I actually really liked it. There were parts that, uh, but I liked it for the most part. Same with her. Uh, there were parts, of course, that we'll get to in the spoiler, spoiler part of the review, which I will talk about, which uh, I found cringy as fuck. Mm -hmm. uh, say it lightly. I mean, all This movie was pretty awesome. Or pretty awesome. The only thing I have to really disagree about it right now is the fact that our screen sucked. Mm. The book description describes it as like Willy Wonka meets the Matrix, which is pretty true. I think it's 2045, where everybody's obsessed with this VR technology mixed with the internet. It's called the Oasis. You can do anything you want in there as long as, I guess, you don't, you know, your VR headset doesn't like fly off your head yeah. or you don't like bump into walls and shit. It's like Tomorrowland, too. But this reminded me of Spy Kids 3. This was like. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right! And somehow that movie just got less of a rating. Spy Kids. Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg. Spy Kids. Spy Kids 2 was part of his shot in Dallas in the Arlington. Oh, yeah. Was it really fun? Yeah. Spy Kids. 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 Really was. Yeah. So we watch Ready Player One and we get stuck on Spy Kids. <laughs> I'll let you know how involved we're. This kid Wade, he's a fuck up and a nerd. He's not a fuck up. I think he's kind of he a, a fuck up. Family. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. I mean, he he has a fucked up family too, and so he wants to go into the <laughs> Oasis he has a and he wants oh. to find this golden egg, which. Like a golden ticket, if you find it, you gain ownership of the whole oasis, and you get like a trillion bazillion dollars, and you win. Like, you just win at life. And so everybody's losing their shit and trying to find it. There's some sinister corporate mastermind known as Electronic Arts who is trying to... What? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. With that. Let's go with Electronic go Arts. Uh, that at the very least. Yeah, uh, Electronic Arts is yeah. trying to take over the Oasis for their own nefarious corporate purposes to taint the world with microtransactions <laughs> <laughs> and loot and loot boxes and, loot boxes, <laughs> and, and platinum memberships and, and, and season passes. Yeah. And on disc DLC. Fuck you, EA. <laughs> oh my god. Ben Mendelsohn's like playing Mark Zuckerberg in twenty years. Like yeah. twenty, he's probably two years. Teachers now. Old man. Spoiler section. If you want to scroll Bye. to our final thoughts and scores at six stars, just scroll right here to Gizmo. 
Give him some love and pats with your electronic <laughs> mouse, and yes, we'll go is. in from there. When I came in this movie, I thought when that... Did you that? <laughs> hey, he beat me to it, to be honest. <laughs> Welcome to Half-Cop. When did you do that? Yeah, well, Welcome to half Daniel, you walked into that. Don't act like you didn't know that. <laughs> the it. feels like a trilogy or a seat or a two movie mm -hmm. idea that's packed into one film mm -hmm. so a lot of the world building just doesn't make sense to me where are the cops in any of this the where are the at the very end of the movie when shit hey, I made a bad. comment about that too yeah. this corporation is so outreaching that they can basically commit domestic terrorism and like you don't see any news footage you don't hear about cops you don't What's the government doing? Is there a They're government in the Oasis? School? They're too busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're too busy <laughs> trying to go from the Oasis. Is Donald Trump just diving into a pool of like, tanning gold. cream? Like, yeah. he's, probably he's, actually, uh, he's actually diving into a pool of money. Like, uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck. I thought he was going to be diving into a pool of like people that look like his daughters. So. But then, like, <laughs> the first like ten minutes, like it was like yeah. information <laughs> overload. Yeah, there was like oh, yeah. so many things going on. I'm like, can you this get a three book thing? I, well, I don't know no, it's a one book, but the sequel was announced maybe like a couple months ago. From what yeah. I've heard. Spielberg basically hacked and slashed it Jaws style in order to get it to a movie that would right. somewhat make sense. Yeah, like I, I know they have to build this whole world of the Oasis and everything, but it's still like so many characters are introduced. Yeah. And like the whole rules to the Oasis and everything was like talked about in the first 10 minutes and it's like rushed through like so fast. It was, I, I, I think that was my main issue also. I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of narration unless you better have a good freaking reason to have narration. Yeah. Like yeah. Fight Club. For this movie especially, all it is is a. Is a cop out, so you don't have to actually write it into the story for the yeah. audience. Like this, uh, this movie treated its audience like like idiots. Yeah, because it just told you everything. I think that there was so much information that they had to introduce that like you didn't get a great sense of the characters. Like Wade meets Artemis in like one scene, and in the next scene they're in love. Like I get he's yeah. never met like a girl before, but at the same time, like that was really fucking rushed. Weirdly enough, I will say this movie did do characters more than I thought it was going to. So did, I thought it was going to do a lot less <laughs> yeah. than this. Like I mean, uh, it, it did do characters, but it just didn't do them nearly as much as it did. Like Wade is uh, the main character. Yeah, like they kind of went to a story, yeah, but then they kept jumping off of it over and over again. And they went to the, the game world, but the game world you don't really. You, he's like, like he's a different person. You don't really have much of a connection with him. There. Basically, you understood Wade by how he feels about Halliday, this mysterious figure, and so he's not left to develop on his own. He's just there to kind of like worship the Steve Jobs, Walt Disney type. I think like the strongest character was Halliday. I thought and so. Walt, yeah. And like I, I really liked Mark Rylance's performance. Like he was just like this weirdo. Like he's like he, he felt like a normal person that was just a general weirdo. Yeah. yeah. Computer, like. I'm gonna developer. say this, and I don't mean this in the way that the internet's gonna take it. I thought Halliday was autistic. Like, <laughs> like, like genuinely, like genuinely, genuinely yeah. textbook autistic. Kind of, because if you look at it like the kissing a girl thing, that's like, oh, he's a nerd, so of course he's scared of kissing girls. Nobody takes that as far to that extreme. Whereas like this guy does, like because there's See, something yeah. else to him. I liked that, though. Like, I feel there's, I like, a, it too. there's a lot of, like, genius people that have like stuff that like that so I, I thought his performance was actually like really really good before he died Spielberg wanted Gene Wilder to play uh, oh. the Mark Rylance role really? yeah. Oh. Oh. yeah also I want to say Ben Mendelsohn's having so much fun here like <laughs> he like that part where he just like he like slowly turns and he's in like this like essentially like a jacuzzi chair mm -hmm. like that was so great like he was he was he was like hamming it up but I thought it was fun I felt like for this movie for the tone that they were going for he was a really good villain yeah, and, uh, can, can we talk about how his avatar looked like human trick from Shrek <laughs> 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 that's all I saw that's not fair to the entire movie trying to think what does this guy look <laughs> yeah, like that's sorry. it that's for me the development of the whole thing was they were trying to put too much too many things on top of each other like we've been talking about they they took the idea of homages oh, oh, oh my homages. I think, I think okay. homages english is a bastard language <laughs> okay. homages to you know old video games they threw in some new video game stuff they put a lot of references to old movies and new movies and stuff like that then they threw in the virtual world 
then they threw in uh, you know the, the the search for the keys and the game the, which is with the main storyline which we followed I think that was easy to follow yeah. in my opinion yeah. and with, you know the stories in the, it was a little too easy yeah and then they put on, on top of that a love story so yeah. they're like trying to pack all of these things that you know a normal movie goer would like in one movie all into the same thing to put oh and then on top of that the love story wasn't even just simple love it was then they had to throw in oh she's got a birthmark oh okay no. oh, I have oh, no. okay. oh no from my understanding of the book it's like that there's like these super ugly people Ty Sheridan at least he's like kind of like a weird looking dude but like <laughs> Olivia <laughs> Cook is like super hot so yeah, it's geez. like <laughs> All right, how we we need to cast a super hot actress? Oh, she's got a weird birthmark. Like, just cast like an ugly chick. Just cast. <laughs> just Honestly, <laughs> I thought the chick that played H. Yeah. I thought, I thought oh, that, that would have been perfect. That was good. Lena Waithe. She's actually really great at yeah, this. Yeah, she was yeah. absolutely. No, 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 no. no. I feel like, like she should have been, been Artemis. Been yeah. Like, like it would have been like that kind of. Uh, yeah. Like they needed like a fat kid to play <laughs> Wade. I really like. Says it's Spielberg, the staging of the action scenes were really good. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a movie that we've been talking a lot of shit, and I think most of the shit is with the script, but like with the craftsmanship, with the Spielberg stuff, yeah. Spielberg makes this movie oh, this was good fun. for me. Yeah. The first chase scene, and then the part where he's going under, like, that's just a really well staged. And even like the first scene where he's just like sliding down the pole, and it's just a continuous tracking shot. Like, that's something that you wouldn't get from somebody. Like, from another director. Is this movie kind of restricted to people that movie? know this pop culture, though? And is that a good thing or not? Even if you haven't seen The Shining, you're still going to know what The Shining is. You're going to yeah. recognize Daniel, it. Daniel, considering to the how much of the theater went, oh, whatever. <laughs> like, you're going to know what it is. not just, like, The Shining stuff. It'll be other references, like, Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. And well, stuff that yeah. Like most of those, Duran, you know, Duran Duran. Yeah. yeah, well, that, yeah, I, I feel like that stuff's... Yeah, I feel, I feel like that stuff's broad enough that like even if you haven't seen it, you can get it. Because of our age, we're good with it. But I mean, they mentioned in the movie there's this kid that's like the show kid is 11 years old. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the kids that are 11 years old just clearly have not grown up. But like, they how many of those small, like, like Borderlands and a couple Halo references? Yeah, but those are references. They're like really You're small, like actual tiny. Yeah. Yes, scenes. character scenes, yeah. sequence. Mm -hmm. I think that because it's such an early period and our our. Our conception is skewed a skew a little bit because everybody that went to go see this movie was knowing what they were getting themselves into. Give it a little bit of aging time, and the people that see it in the future, when they say, "Oh, look, I remember this movie, Ready Player One's on TV or something like that," yeah. and they flip to it, they're gonna flip off halfway through because they're not gonna understand half of what's going Think on. Think about the React channels where it's like kids react to yeah. the Game Boy, and this kid's like, "Where's but the touch screen?" Don't yeah. like children. What is that? Yeah, but <laughs> he's make. But it's Spielberg. He's the guy that makes movies from a kid's point of view. And so there's this weird I disconnect. Like, I think kids will like this. I think the cutoff with the references is at a perfect time where people our age, maybe a little bit younger, are going to get it. But kids who don't have much going on in the movie, they're not at an age where they're going to think too much about it. Yeah. So they well, can still enjoy the things okay. that are enjoyable in it. It could be incentive also for kids who may not know what that stuff what is, I'm is to go and yeah. find out what that stuff is. And now we've introduced this amazing culture to younger generations or even older generations who may not have ever delved into that realm before. A movie so focused on nostalgia, you need that deep, resonant, emotional connection. And so for people that grew up with a bunch of the shit that we're watching here, that's a lot easier of a connection for them to make. Whenever they see Halliday at the end playing Space Invaders, <laughs> that might be different for a little kid who's playing on his phone or an iPad or a Wii. The visual and the emotion needs to really hit. But I don't think kids mm -hmm. with iPhones have that nostalgia factor yet. Yeah. iPhones are still a big thing. So yeah. They don't think twice of it. And considering so Space Invaders something. is still in Dave and Buster's, yeah. like, you can play Space Invaders in so Dave and Buster's. So that's kind of what I was asking. So for people that don't have that nostalgia connection, how do you think they're going to interpret this movie that is so reliant on like these memories of an 80s kid 
and the nostalgia mm-hmm. that comes from that time. I think the whole technological aspect of it is for them. Like they're yeah. living, they're growing up in a world that's built on technology. They were introduced into this world with all of this VR, you know, the drones and all that. We already have that, so maybe that's for them. So if we scroll to the top, go work into our spoiler free part of the review where we give our final thoughts and scores on six stars for Ready Player One. I absolutely love this movie. It kept me excited. I agree with most of what you guys said. It was a little bit too much going on at once, but I don't think that took away from the movie at all. It was a beautiful world built. I'm going to give it a five and a half. I will say that I got a lot of Avatar vibes with this. Yeah. For one, <laughs> the, the story was sort of similar. But two, um, Holy shit. <laughs> but two not, it was a movie that I really liked, but it's not one that I really want to see again. So I'm going to say that it was, I'll give it four and a half. Anybody who sees this movie will be lying if they said they didn't have fun with it. I just didn't like the writing like very much at all. I'm gonna give this three stars. If you're gonna see it, see it on like a nice yeah. screen. Yeah. Like it's worth that for the theatrical experience. And I think Spielberg really elevates what maybe is a great source material. It's enjoyable. It's not gonna last past the test of time like some of his other works. But I, I think it's mostly well done. It's a little too long, but I'll go four out of six. I love the movie. I thought it was gorgeous. I thought it was really fun. I think it'll stand for quite some time, and you're, like, even maybe the, your kids will like it. But So I'm going to give it a five and a half out of six. I agree with all of you. A fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. I agree with literally yeah. everyone. <laughs> Every Zero world. stars. Yeah, sure, no, exactly. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, fantastic world building. Fantastic, you know, characters. I think they chose very good actors for the roles that they played. Uh, great flashbacks. All the, you know, The Shining, all that stuff. It was awesome. And uh, I'd probably give it a five. Five stars out of six. I walked out of it a lot more annoyed than I am now. <laughs> like ta- yeah, talking through it, it's kind of just like, Talk okay. Problems, Daniel. This gets the rating that I immediately thought like five minutes in, which is three out of six. This is a movie that is not for me, but I will totally understand why everybody else likes it or loves it. Or want some more of it. I am going to give it a five because I actually I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, there were a couple cringy moments that probably I could have very much done without it. No, I wasn't born in the 80s, but my parents were. And so it, I, I saw a lot of things that I remember growing up because of them. And then I saw a lot of things that I actually grew up with. Um, so it, to me, it, it, it was okay. It was fine. Um, Say the worst for last, right? Take a sound binary. Um, the best for last. So, Ready Player One, pretty cool concept. I did feel like it was a bit underwhelming because of the fact that I don't know if it was just our screen that was shitty or if just everything felt rushed and it was hard to visually see what was going on and stuff like that. But other than that, you know, I mean, the story was rushed. Uh, I mean, I liked the characters. They were fine for what they were given. I'll give it a 4.5. So it's a 4.44444. Okay. I thought there were... Oh, I, right. I was counting so, oh, sorry. Jay-Z <laughs> out of six stars for Ready Player One. If y'all liked this super probably long episode, go ahead and click the like button, subscribe, click the notification bell, go into your notifications and actually look up Half Cocked because I found that clicking the notification bell actually doesn't work half the time. No. You got Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you want to hit us up on any of those social medias. You've got WrestleMania, April, 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 April. 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 WrestleMania. Hey, what's up? We're two awesome men. Uh, we have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Oh, and a YouTube channel where we also review. Videos, so. <laughs> 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 if you want to ch- check that out. Yeah. And we're trying to review all the uh, Marvel movies before Infinity War comes out. Probably not going to happen. I saw Iron Man. Oh, we have part Iron two before out. Yeah. to film the rest. Yeah. So, so go ahead and check out their shit. I have a blog where I review movies, liamongahin.wordpress.com, five years running, just check me out. What is he eating down there? Probably his own. I think he's own. just licking his own. Oh, sorry. Are you, <laughs> you disturbed. What do you want to You disturbed my yeah, eating. the carpet soaks. <laughs> oh. oh, no, that was when my friend spilled, like, a pizza there. Oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, How do you spill a pizza? <laughs> <laughs> he spilled the pizza. Did you put it in a blender and then just pour it off? <laughs> Until next time, watch their shit, read his shit, watch... Wait, did I say watch our for them? Yes. Fuck! Alright, bye. Whatever. Let's get out of here.